I really enjoy working with the Finnish um, community in that sense because I, for me, business is easy. You get a yes or you get a no. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's not too complicated. Do you want to buy? Yes or no? And uh, if you go to other parts of the world, it's like, you know, there's a hassle. It takes you a day to, you get a lot of yes, but it's a no and it's not, <laughs> you don't know when a yes is a no and a no is a yes. Here it's simple. So my name is Jonas Kelberg. Uh, I'm a Syrian entrepreneur. Uh, I've started a lot of companies. Uh, I've failed even more uh, companies. Um, during the whole dot-com crazy area, I started my own first venture um, called Mobison, which was listed during a period of short time. Started another company called Campus Mobile. Sold that to Vodafone. Learned the hard way of um, how important delight is for your product and not just sales. And after that, I jumped on um, um, a project that some of my former colleagues um, at Tele2, Niklas and Janus, and um, they had started Skype and I joined when they had got their first funding and uh, I ran that company. But uh, to cut it short, I'm a serial entrepreneur that had done a lot of things and failed quite a lot as well. I'm Jonas Kelberg. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, the game changing. Um, I hope we can get the second slide up there as well. Um, so, um, the last couple of years I've been working with the Kinevik Group. Um, they own Tele2 here, but I've been responsible for their online acquisitions. And um, I've done the investments into Salando, challenging you know, the um, apparel industry. Uh, I did the in investment into the Rocket Internet guys, the Samware brothers, basically trying to disrupt uh, the VC US world. Um, I was uh, the chairman of the board for iCloud that we sold to Apple. Uh, I've been, um, I was the founder of uh, Player.io, sold to Yahoo a couple of months ago. Um, and I'm going to tell you a bit more about my story. Um, and what I believe is the disruptiveness. I think people call it you know, the troublemakers. I will call it game changers, because I think that's a much nicer and, and fun word. Um, so that's basically the story. If this been a normal lecture, uh, I'll be doing this for about 30 minutes and you're listening. Uh, let's turn this around. Uh, the challenge is because I'm often wrong. And what I say doesn't always comply to everybody's thinking. So tell me I'm wrong. Let's get a discussion going here. Because your knowledge about game changing, running businesses, beyond my imagination can take that to a no new level. So see, let's do that. But let's start with this. Is it the fast that beat the slow, or is it the big that beat the small? Fast that beat the slow? Uh, hands up. The big that beat the small? Hmm? It's a 50-50. It's not, a, it's not, a, it's not a, you know, a, a unanimous vote here, because I think it, what it actually does, it also changes over time. So let's move on. What is it that defines a game changer? I think for me, it's about creating a new market or disrupting existing ones. Basically, are you mad enough of going after those big guys? And how do you actually do that? That has been my passion for nearly all the years that I've been working, trying to understand how can you do things better, how can you do things different, but are you willing to change the game? Because there's a lot of people there talking about innovation, how important it is, but they're not really willing to change the game and really take that risk of stepping outside and saying, I don't give a shit about the US VCs and all my friends there because I'm going to do it in a different way with some guys from Germany. Right? Wrong? I don't know. In the end, it will prove if the 400 million euros investment into Zalando is success or not, because success is never defined. But let's take you through my, my other passion. My other passion has been also, during this period of time, I've been writing three books uh, with a Harvard and Stanford professor. And I, I met Tom and Leanna a couple of years ago when I worked back at Skype, and I had the vision of writing a book, a 100-page book. And Half of it had to be pictures. And they said, you know, you're mad. You know, that's not the dream I want to have. That's not what I want to do as an as a author and academic. But I said, well, there are thousands and millions of entrepreneurs out there, and we need to do something accessible. So let me give it a shot. So I did it my way, together with them. 
Then I went back to the publishers, the existing industry, and I said, I got this great book. It's 100 pages. It has the best authors in them, Clayton Christensen, Red and Blue Ocean. We got it all in here. They literally laughed or even gave, didn't call me back because they said, you know, a book has to be 500 pages with one theory. We can't have one book with 50 theories on 100 pages and a lot of pictures. So sorry, we can't help you. Well, I said, screw it. I'll, give, I'll start my own publishing house. How can difficult can it be? <laughs> then, the next part, I said, let's launch a new book, but let's only have pictures. No wording at all, called business creation. How do you create the business? And then, magically, out of nowhere, applies Wiley, one of the most prestigious publishing houses, and says, we would be very happy to publish your book, Jonas. Why? I would say there's only one reason. It's selling. And they want to be part of it. So now we're launching this in the US in a couple of days, actually, and it's already out there in the UK. But my, my compassion has been around the framework that I developed together with Tom and Leon, and, and the, the framework actually started at Harvard. And, it's, um, and when we started, I said, okay, what do we call the book? And I said, let's call the book Sales. And they said, yo, Jonas, you're doing a lot of stuff, but let's not call it Sales, you know because that sales doesn't have a good word in academia. Okay, so what do we call it? Uh, it's a customer acquisition-centric strategy. <laughs> Why? We needed the word strategy, because otherwise we would never get published in the Harvard Business Review, and that was very important for my co-authors. But one of the things when we developed this is that this is the framework they're using in Silicon Valley. And the interesting part here is that customer acquisition is in the center. Why? If you're crazy enough to want to change the world, I tell you, you need to sell to everyone your idea, your passion, why you're going to change the world. And it's much harder if you have something that no one believes you will succeed. So when, if you go back to a lot of entrepreneurs that I've worked with, in the end, it's all about adding customers. Even if it's a religion, even if it's politics, in the end, it's about getting people to buy your idea. And this is basically how I started my, my career. I had the opportunity to actually start in working for Kinevik very early on, after I just finished and graduated. I started as the CEO assistant. And as the CEO assistant, you cook coffee, you re-park cars, you do a shitload of PowerPoints, then we bought a couple of companies and we listed two. And what still is tradition in Kinevik, as the CEO assistant, you become the CEO for one of the subsidiaries. And that felt very natural, you know, I had a double degree and I spent a whole year with top management. So for me, becoming a CEO was totally natural. So, when you're a new CEO, what's the first thing you do? Anyone? What do we learn in school? Strategy, of course. It's interesting, do you know how many books there are at Stockholm School of Economics when it comes to sales? Give me... How many books do you think there is about sales? Four. How many do you think there are in strategy? Thousand. And the interesting thing with all the strategy books, I often say, they always end. Add more, add more revenue, add more customers. 